Grandma, she is fighting with Alzheimer's stage four, and she's got dementia, and she's she's not doing what she's supposed to. My aunt and uncle is taking care of her, and they're to the point that they don't know if they're going to be able to take care of her much longer. Let's remember her. Because she's walking out of the house with knives, and so we don't, she's just wondering now, so just pray for that. Let's pray for her. Yes, Sister Susie. Remember me in the morning. Remember Sister Susie in the morning. Yes. Surgery Yeah, I'm suggesting he's having surgery Wednesday. So many needs. Yeah. Kenneth Dee Dee requested prayer for John this morning, too. So let's remember them in prayer. I don't John, know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. But she's requesting prayer for him. Let's remember John today. Aren't you glad God knows? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. You know, it's just our job to just go to the Lord and believe yes, God. Amen. Right? Amen. Right? right. And, and so let's, let's remember these today. How many have an unspoken request? God knows all about it. How many have some lost? Family, loved yes, ones, yes, friends, yes. somebody that you know. Yes, I, I tell you, you know, Jesus is coming. Yes, Amen. Yes. Let me say that again. Jesus is yes, coming. Yes. All you have to do is look around. 
I used to say all we got to do is turn on the television, but you don't have to do that no more. You just look around and just tell Jesus is coming. Yes, amen. How many is looking forward to that? Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful time that's going to be. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, Sherman, if he will, this be this morning prayer today, will you? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you today. First of all, we give you glory and praise and honor that's due unto you in your name. But God, as we stand here with thanksgiving in our heart, God, we ask that you would touch and move in a mighty way in each and every one of these requests. Those who have had loved ones to pass away, God, I pray that you would send your spirit and comfort them, touch them, and move in a mighty way. Those that need a healing touch, God, I pray that you would look upon those stripes that were put on the back of Jesus Christ for our healing. God, it says by your stripes or by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. Past tense. The price has been paid. We claim the healing for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, we ask that you would touch those special requests that was given in. You know each and every individual need, Lord, even before we ask. But God, you said ask, and we are this morning, God. We're asking that you would touch and move in a mighty way. Continue to reach down and encourage, lift up, and move in a mighty way. And God, help us to be ready at any time you should come or call. <clears throat> because as Pastor said, we can look around and see that your soon return is at hand. And God, we ask that you would just touch and move in a mighty way. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, why don't you just lift your hand and bless him and thank him for the Hallelujah. answer. He is the answer, but the answer is on the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Just believe him for it right Hallelujah. now. Father, it's a step of faith. Lord, we just, thank you. We're just praising you right now. Lord, for meeting the needs. Yes, for strengthening, Lord. For encouraging, thank for uplifting. God, for healing, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. God, we praise you for that today. Meet every day in Jesus' name. Our ushers are coming, Brother Stars, I think, and Caleb. The usher, the plates are right there. Amen today. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for all that you do. All that you do. And I tell you what you're helping to do. You're helping to do ministry. Yes. I mean, we're giving to foreign domestic missions. We're we're blessing little babies down at Baptist Hospital with little infant clothes. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. yes. Amen. Jesus said, if you've done it the least of these, you've done it to him. That's right. Hello? Yes. You know, and, and, and we're getting ready on Tuesday to carry a load, to carry a load of uh, toilet paper and paper towels to the home for children. Yes. You'd be surprised at what's been coming in. Somebody told me, said, well, just uh, don't let nobody rob you on the way down. You know, total paper <laughs> is getting scarce, you know. So I might have to cover it up with some blankets or something so nobody know what we're carrying. Amen. But, uh, you know, and we're, and we're doing that. And, and, and we're just blessing people. And listen, that's what God enjoys. That's what God blesses. God smiles upon that. So every life that's touched, every soul that's blessed, you have a part in that. And one of these days, we're going to hear Jesus say, well done. Well done. Well done. If I just hear them two words, and he's looking at me when he says it.
with your penny march. Can't much call it a penny march anymore. They bring in dollars, so the dollar march. How about that? Sing a new song to him who sits 
That's how we have our victory. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go with me today to Exodus the 13th chapter. Exodus the 13th chapter. Beginning at verse number 17. Exodus chapter 13. Beginning at verse number 17. If you will stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. And so Exodus chapter 13 verse 17. Amen. And I have the new King James version. But so here's what it says. Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. Shortcut. Easy way. And you know, that's, that's, that's kind of what we are. We, we're easy way people, right? I mean, all this technology is, uh, I think in some ways, they, they say it's made us smarter, but I, I'm not sure. Because we have began to rely on that stuff so much. Well, I'll preach on that in a minute. For God says, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For he had placed the children of Israel under Solomon, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. So they took their journey from Succoth and camped in Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. You can be seated. As I was here on Monday praying and seeking the Lord, this message came to me. That's the kind of God I serve. That's, right. that's the kind of God that I serve. Look at somebody and say, that's the kind of God that I serve. <laughs> you see, when I begin to look at this, we live in a world that is all about saving time and doing almost anything. In fact, in the world today, technology has seen such advancement so much that the moment something happens anywhere in the world, at the same moment, we can receive an instant update on our phone. If you will turn that down just a little bit. A world of information is readily available at the touch of a button. Mm -hmm. oh. How many are familiar with what's called Siri on the phone that you carry around? Most of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Siri. What about this? Siri. What about that? If you're at home, you have, some of us have an Amazon Echo or whatever they call them things. And, you know, and, and I notice in the house, Cadence will sometimes, she'll say, uh, uh, whatever its name is. Alexa. There it is, Alexa. <laughs> and she'll say, Alexa, what is the weather for tomorrow? And all of a sudden, it'll pop up and it'll say, here's the weather forecast for tomorrow. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Come on. Just a little over a century ago, it took Hudson Taylor four months to travel from England to China and the same amount of time to send mail back to England. It's in the same manner that we want and even expect God to move a lot of times. We serve an eternal crockpot God while living in a microwave society. Hello, somebody. Of course, from his eternal perspective, God is not inefficient, nor is he slow. No. Come on. Hello, somebody. Come on. You see, that's the kind of God that I serve. Yeah. He's never too early. He's never too late. But yet, he is always on time. In everything. You say, well, I think he's 
late. Well, Mary and Martha did too. Uh, yes. But according to him, he was right on time. On, she said, it. Lord, you're four days. Right. It's been four days. Four He's days. now yes. in the grave. Uh, he stinks yes. by now. Uh, yes. If only you had been here, right. my right. brother would not yeah. have died. Right. You see, he knows what he's doing and he accomplishes his purpose right on schedule. Yes, he does. Amen. Yes. I, I'm thankful for this. Yes. You see, but from our time bound perspectives, God's ways often seem incredibly wasteful, Come on, insufficient, mm -hmm. and slow. In fact, many people believe or have at least this kind of thought process about God that he is an old man with a long beard with a cane in his hand and sitting in a rocking chair Come on now. and just wasting time on, as time goes by. But can I tell you something? In, in the heavenly realm, there is no such thing as a Timex watch. There is no such thing as a Seiko watch. Y'all not hearing me? You see, with God, there is no time. Time has been created for us. Come on. 60 seconds in a minute. 60 minutes in an hour. 24 hours in a day. Seven days in a week. Are y'all listening? Yes. Yes. Anywhere from 28 to 31 days in a month. Yes. 365 days a year. And if it's a leap year, add a day or two more. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Yes. But you see, with God, there is no time. That's right. God, his people had just been released Come on. from 400 years yes. of bondage. Yes. yes. 400 years. 300 of which, according to most theologians, was very hard. It was hard labor. Many of you will remember that even before this, when Moses was commanded of the Lord to go back unto Egypt to deliver his people, he said, Whom shall I say sent me? I don't want to just stand before Pharaoh and look like I don't have an idea of what I'm talking about. God says you're not absolutely going to have to. Here's what you need to tell him. Two words, it will sum it up. I am. You see, that's the kind of God that I serve. I am. Not I was. Not I wish I would be. Not I wish I could be. But we're serving. Oh, hallelujah. I wish I had somebody here. That's the kind of God that I serve. 
serve. He said, you tell them I am has sent you. Yes, I am that I am. Now, the world's not going to understand that. Most of your friends are not going to understand that. Most of your family's not going to understand that. Oh, I'm getting somewhere. Yes, Come on. Because when you make the determination to serve God, it's not going to make sense to a whole lot of people. That's right. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You see, Egypt was the land of not enough. Finally, Pharaoh got to the point, he said, you'll make bricks now without straw. Stubborn. Bull-headed. Hard-headed. Hello, somebody. Absolutely refuse to be a blessing to the people of God. They were getting ready to go into the wilderness, which would be the land of just enough. But they were on their way to Canaan, which is the land of more than the. Amen. Can I tell you something? I'm, I, we might be in the wilderness right now. Come on. It might look like that God Come is on. a thousand miles away, but can I tell you we're moving on to Canaan. So Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad. I'm glad that God looks after his people. You see, in verse 17, God didn't lead his people the straight and direct way. The most feasible way. The most possible way. You see, that's the way we look at God. Lord, I want you to move right here, and this would be the most feasible way I see. And you know what the last time I checked is we we weren't here when God spoke this world into existence. Come on. So how what do you know? Hello, somebody. We 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 we've lived here uh, uh you know various number of years depending on our age and and, and yet we think we've accomplished. We think we know everything. We think we're all right. But yet when you look at God, we don't absolutely know a blessed thing. That's right. That is right. They, they, they said, now listen, we can go the straight way. We can go the obvious way. We can go the direct way. But you see, if they had, they possibly would have become discouraged. Disheartened and gun shy. Yes. That's what I wrote down. <clears throat> they would have looked at the battle as too much to take on and desired to go back where they were comfortable, which was the land of not enough. You know, it's amazing to me how we get comfortable in the land of not enough. Yes. I wish I had about 10 Come on. Come on, man. that would help me. Oh, Look at what he says. He says, I'm not going to lead them the way that's near. Yes, amen. Which is the way of the Philistines. I'm not going to lead them there because here's the deal. Lest perhaps, this is God speaking, they change their mind. That's right. You know why sometimes God don't answer prayers like you think he ought to? Uh -huh. Come on. It's because you'll change your mind. Come on, man. That's right. That's right. That's right. That'll preach every day and twice on the same Come on now. That's good. You see, we want God to answer it the way that we want it to be Come answered, on, but yet we don't understand that that's really, that, you know, if God answers it specifically that way, that will change our mind. Yes, that we won't rely upon him. I wish you would help me, please. That, 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 that is the way, you know, that, that, that we may become discouraged and, and, and get to where we don't depend upon God. You see, God wants us to depend upon him. Not depend on somebody else. Right. Not depend on the church. Amen. Not depend on that. I've, I've heard people say, well, I depend on church to get my get my praise on. Well, you're in trouble then. Come on. Yes, Lord. Come on. Yes, we can come to, to, to church and get our praise on. And we can feel God and God can move and God yes, can speak. Can. And, and, and we can, you know, just get uh, more than a goose pimple and all that good stuff. And, right. and, and, and we just get real good and filled up. And, on, and, and we think we've done our service yes. for the whole week. Yes. That's right. Come on. And I want to say something here. That's going to blow your mind. And all of us 
us that's on social media and preachers that's on television. All oh, that's wonderful. But I'm afraid that the people of God have become so comfortable with that that they, they rely upon Come that on. to get them where they need to be with the Lord. Oh, yeah. Come, Come on, on now. Good preaching. Yeah. yeah. That one in my notes said it won't cost you nothing. <laughs> we depend upon others to give us a word. Come on now. Come on. We depend upon others to get, get help us get our shout on. What in the world? Come on. Has God not done enough for you that you can shout unto him? see myself in pictures, that's just me. But I love to hear good preaching, but I can't rely upon somebody else to always give me a word. I've got to get in this book. I've got to spend time with God. I've got to get alone with Him. I just steal away. Now that's an old song out there. I just steal away somewhere. That's a lost art. Yes. Bless the Lord. God said, I would take them this way, but. And I think God says to us sometimes when we when we go to him in prayer, I know this ain't popular preaching, but I'm going to oh, preach it anyway because it's going to help you grow. Come on. But you see, God sometimes will say, well, I'm not going to answer the way you want me to because if I do, uh -huh. here's what's going to happen. How many has ever looked back? Come on. It might be some years or months or days or whatever. After you've prayed for something and, 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 and you've got a little more wisdom and knowledge and God did work it out, but it wasn't quite the way you thought. And then all of a sudden, you know, you think you begin to think if, if God had worked it out this way, you know, it might, I might not be where I Come on, come on. I, I may not be where I am today if he had worked it out. I thought that was the best way, but you know, now that I look back on it, hindsight's always 20 20. Yes, amen. Now that I look back on it and I see how God worked it out, it was so much more beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Yes, you know what God's wanting? God is wanting us to just trust him. Yes, trust him. How many in this house has God ever worked anything out for you? Amen. Yes. yes. And, 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 and it makes no sense. It really don't make it don't, it don't make logical sense and how it worked out. You say, God, how in the world, how in the world do I have four hundred more dollars in my bank account Woo! this month? And, 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 and when I did all my bills and what I was going to be bringing in, I, I didn't have a thirty-five dollars left, but somehow. Yeah. Yeah. You see, they would have looked at the battle as too much to take on. Come on. And, and, and would begin to have looked back to the land of not enough. Yes. The land of despair. The land of heartache. The land of trouble. The oh, land of yeah. burden. Yes. Thank you. Have you ever found yourself wondering what it would be like if you stayed back wherever it was where things were at the very least comfortable? Come on. See, we like it when we're comfortable. Hello? Think about it when you're at home watching a movie. Cadence. Let me tell you what she done to me the other night. <laughs> Only this one. All of my children are unique. Uh, it's amazing at what all they're all different. And she says, Dad, we're going to watch a movie. Yes, ma'am. She says, Well, yeah, finish getting ready for bed and, 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 and then come on in the living room and we're going to sit down and watch a movie. 
I said, okay. I get in there. And she's got this thing fall out, you know. And it kind of reminds me of God. God has this thing fall out. You're stepping into something. I wish I had a witness in here. You knew you're stepping into something. And you're thinking, well, what, what, what's going to happen now? And all of a sudden you step in and God says, here it is. I've got everything laid out. And you're just... So, so I, I walk in, and she's got a, a, a bowl here. She says, uh, you need to put your phone right here. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> Only cadence. How in the world was she thinking something like that? <laughs> well, it just so happened that when I walked in, I was, I was, I was, I was texting some people in the church uh, about today's service and this and that. I said, well, uh, let, let, me, let me finish, Dad. <laughs> Hold on. Finish this right here. She says, put your phone right here. I put my phone right there. She says, now I've got this list right here. <laughs> she says, what would you like for a snack? <laughs> you listen to God is. Yes, I do. He's got, if you'll just, if you'll just trust him. I see, I had no idea what I was walking into. I just was walking right there. And, and here she's got everything. She's got it listed out. Do you want some, do you want a bottle of water? Uh, you know, do you want hot chocolate? You know, what, what is it? And, 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 and so then I, when I, when I sat down on the couch to sit down and watch this movie, <laughs> then I went to get up. She said, hey, what do you need? I'll get it. Aww. I tell you, that's the way God is. Hey, I've got it. Wait, I, I've got it. Wait, I was wait, 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 I got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. If you just trust me, I've got it. If you just trust me, I've got it. You know, and, 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 and I'm telling you, if you we'll just trust that, that's the kind of God that I serve. Have you ever found yourself wondering, would things be different if you had went another way or done something different? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. If only I'd married that one. Come on, come on. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Come on. Uh, yeah. come on. If only I'd if only I'd made this decision, if only I'd done this different. Yeah. If only I'd done that different. Yeah. Here's my phone lid. Come on. Here's my thought with that. The Apostle Paul said this in Philippians chapter number 3, mm -hmm. beginning at verse number 14 from the NASB. He said, not that I've already obtained yes. it Come on, or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold yes. of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. Uh -huh. But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the call for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The King James Version of that verse 14 said, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I've got, to, I've got to get that mark. There was a song that was out years ago that said, I've got to make it. More than fame, wealth, or desire. More than all this world's attire. More than anything in my life, I've got to make it. If I can run and keep the pace, then I will see His blessed face. More than anything in my life, I've got to make it. It goes on. More than anything in my life, I've got to make it. I've got to know that my name's inscribed in the Lamb's great book of life. I long to hear him say, well done. Enter in, my child, you've won. More than anything in my life, I've got to make it. Somebody say amen. How many times do you think that God has taken you another route 
other than the one that you thought. Come on. Yes. Come on. How many times has God worked things out exactly like you thought He should or that He would? Come on. Yes. You see, God knows best. God yes. knows right. Yes. And yes. if God always worked things out according to how we think that He should, then we would be in charge and not yes. God. That's right. right. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Romans 8 and 28 said, We know that all things work together for good of them that love God. And then they're called according to His purpose. That is for your spiritual and eternal good. Hello, somebody. Not everything is going to work out exactly like you think it ought to or how it should, but it will work out to your good. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here's, here's the deal. In chapter 13, verses 21 to 22, God is leading his people along, cloud by day and a fire by night. That's the kind of God I serve. A cloud by day and then it would be a fire by night. There was an older song out that reminded me when I thought about that. It said, in shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, yes. God leads his dear children along. Yes, Where the water's cool flow bays the weary one's feet, God leads his dear children along. Some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Yes. Some through great sorrow. Yes. But God gives a song in the night season. Come on. Yeah, come on. In the night season. Yes. Fire by yes. night. Somebody yes. say amen. Yes. And all the day long. Praise God. God leads his dear children. Yes. God. So God didn't lead the children of Israel the most obvious way, probably the easiest route. Because the Philistines were there. Mm -hmm. You see, God knew that at least some of them would change their mind and not move forward. Yep. Amen. If God showed you every battle, everything that you would face, you'd probably turn around and walk away. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Come on, truth. I've made the statement, if only I knew. That's why you didn't know. That's right. I'm preaching better than you're shouting. That's right. You see, some of us want to know why God didn't lead us the simplest way and why we don't understand what the problem is or why, why God doesn't do things the way we think He ought to. Could it be that He knows that we will change our minds yes. about moving forward in and with Him and what He has for us? What He's got on the other side is much better than what you yes. got right now. Yes. I wish you hear yes. that. What God has on the other side. Yes. What God has up ahead. We're human, right? Yes. If you could have seen the future and all the heartaches, the problems, the trials, etc., that you would endure, would you still have chosen to live for and serve Amen. God? Amen. Would you have still chosen to take the road that not many are willing to take? He said, many there be, but few. Yes. Straight is the way, a narrow is the gate. You see, we want things the easiest way possible. That's right. This is why we like microwaves. Yes. Pop right. it in there, and in just right. a jiffy, right. it'll be ready. Right. How many like instant potatoes? Nope. Yeah. Well, <laughs> how many like mashed taters? That's uh -huh. why I call them up here, yeah. mashed yeah. taters. Oh, yes. <laughs> how many like TV dinners? How many like a full course meal that's been cooked with love yes. on the stove? Hallelujah. Yes. I'll never forget, I had a uh, little old Thurman Jenkins, bless his heart, he's went on to be with the Lord now, but when they first came uh, around here to pastor a church, I, I had invited them for dinner, for lunch on that Sunday afternoon, and he and Sister Jenkins came, and, and, and we're sitting there at the table, and and uh, I didn't really know him, really from Adam's house yet, you know, and 
So we're getting to know each other and this, that, and other. And my wife, she had made all this wonderful stuff. And we sat down, Sister Stires, and eat. And he says, my blessed. I said, what's wrong? <laughs> he said, no, this, this food is wonderful. He said, where in the world did she learn to cook like this? I said, well, she's from Gaston County. He said, that explains it right there. <laughs> He said, man, you ought to keep her a while. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So, a full course meal, nothing like it that's been cooked on the stove. Come on there. A little dash of this, a little dash of that. Don't you know that God loves you and he's always looking out for your best interest? Thank you, Lord. That's the kind of God that I serve. Yes, Amen. What he's been cooking for you right now is much more, much, much better than any TV dinner that you thought God would work out best. You see, God is setting his word. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And also that the steps of a good man or a good person are ordered of the Lord. Yes. So, when I thought about that, where God said right there, he said, lest they change their mind. I couldn't help but think, distraction. Mm -hmm. Come on. You know, we're afraid in the world of weapons of mass destruction. Oh, that's yeah. right. Come on. But you know, we're fighting an enemy spiritually that is the, he is the, 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 the king of weapons of mass distraction. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. If he can distract us, Come on. I wish y'all would help me. Come on. Bless him. Psychologists, there was two psychologists uh, that I won't name right here, but that they found that the human mind is actually wired for this state of continuous distraction. In a study conducted by 2,250 adults, they concluded that we spend around 47%, I want you to listen to this, of every waking hour, our mind wandering. <laughs> 47% of, of every waking hour that you're awake, your mind wanders. You ever been told to somebody and you tell they're not, they're not paying attention? Yes. 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 How many can tell that? Yes. My wife said, I knew you weren't paying attention when they were talking to you. I said, how do you, how do you tell? She said, I just tell you. That's true. Also called stimulus-independent thought, mind-wandering, is an experience that is so ordinary, so natural to us, we don't even notice it. It's waiting at the gate for your plane and fantasizing about that dream position uh, or the company that you hope you'll have in a few years. It's sitting in an Uber thinking about the five emails you forgot to write earlier that morning. Hello. It's waiting for a conference call to begin and spacing out the mental image of you sitting on the beach in Bali. Hello. I don't even know where that's at. You see, we all know this state and it turns out to be the default mode of operation of the brain. They would get distracted they would get distracted. How many of us are easily distracted? Come on. And the enemy wants to keep us distracted yes, so that we don't move yes, forward yes. with what God has for us. Amen. Think about that, 47%. If that's true in the natural, how much more in the spiritual? Come on. Hmm? The employers who, surveyed, uh, who were surveyed cited the following distractions. I'm still talking about distractions. Cell phones, texting, that's a major distraction. Amen. The internet, gossip, yeah. social media, yeah. email, yeah. co workers dropping by. Yeah. Now, this is at work. Uh -huh. Meetings, smoke and snack breaks. Yeah. So, in January of 2018, the question was asked what are the biggest distractions of life? The number one, according to this study right here, was social media. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I can believe that. They said that social is by far the biggest distraction of all uh, for the majority of people. The second one was a smartphone. 
Social aside, uh, aside even, our smartphones serve as a huge source of distraction in our daily life. I just have to ask the question. When you get up, when you get up in the morning, how many is the first thing you do is draw, draw your cell phone? How many of you have been honest? <laughs> they said the third biggest distraction of life was media. And then people was the fourth biggest distraction in a study in January of 2018. God says, if I take them this way, they're going to get distracted. Here's another thought. How much has God worked differently in our life because if he worked it out the way we thought, we'd get distracted? Come on. Come on. Yes, amen. Yes. But Lord, I want it right now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, 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 this is a microwave society. Why have you caught up with the times? Why are you still a crockpot God? Come on. Come on. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching. Yes. Come on. Are you with it? Come on. I'm used to. Hey, listen, now I don't even have to leave my house. Uh -huh. I don't even have to get on the phone. All I got to do is get on my phone. Instead of making a phone call, I just type in a few buttons and order pizza. Uh, yeah. Now I don't even have to talk to anybody. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And all it's doing is dumbing us down. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <coughs> Come on. That's right. That's right. Some people, I'm, I'm going to say this since I'm there. Some people don't even know how to talk to people now. Come on, man. That's the truth. That's the truth. And they don't even know how to talk to somebody. They don't. Woo! That's good. Amen. And we're used to just getting on this thing and uh, let's say I want two cheese pizzas. Uh -uh. Give me some crazy bread. <laughs> Hello. Come on. Give me a little garlic sauce. Hit a button and bam, we can just order pizza just yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> now we don't even have to swipe our, our card. You can just put it up with the thing and it dings and there it is, just took it right out. How in the world? <laughs> Could it be that God? has not led us some of the ways that we thought he, that he should because he knew that we would become distracted. Mm -hmm. and Amen. Bless you see, that's the kind of God that I serve. He doesn't do things according to your timetable. He doesn't Praise do them God. according on, to the man. way that you think he ought to. That's right. Amen. Because again, you don't know best. You think you do. No, you don't. Uh -huh. Amen. But God is saying, hey, I've got, I've got your best interest at heart. I've got your best Mine Come on, at yes. heart. Yes, he does. Yep, yep. So I'm almost done. Bless Chapter 14 begins with God speaking to Moses and letting them, mm -hmm. letting him know what is fixing to happen. God says, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what's getting ready to take place. Uh -huh. God tells the children of Israel exactly where to camp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amen. He tells them exactly in verse 2 where, where to camp. And I don't have time to go into it, but one of those places that he mentions uses the word bitter uh -huh. for its meaning. And I thought, Lord, why in the world would you do that? And God is saying he doesn't want us to become bitter where are we at? Come on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. There's one of the distractions. Thank you, Lord. But also at the same time, God is getting ready to deal with a man named Pharaoh who was bitter. Yes. He was bitter that it was not like it was when his dad was Pharaoh. He was bitter because it was not like he wanted. It, he was bitter because he was not in charge and he began to see the hand of God and how much that he was really not in charge. And God is getting ready to deal with Pharaoh in this place of bitterness. Look at what Moses is told 
about Pharaoh's thought, thought pattern. Pharaoh thinks and says that the children of Israel are walking about aimlessly with no sense of direction. He says that's exactly what Pharaoh thinks right now is if you're walking around here aimlessly and no sense of direction. That's right. And that's what the enemy wants you to believe is yes. you're just walking around and serving the God aimlessly Amen. Mm -hmm. and that it's not going to get you anywhere. Lord. It's not going to benefit you at all. But can I tell you, uh -huh. yeah. Hallelujah. I know exactly uh -huh. where I'm going. Amen. I know exactly Amen. where I'm headed. This place is not my home. I'm just passing through. Hello, somebody. He leads me. He guides me. Somebody said that. He leads me. He guides me. David said, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come from me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Don't let the enemy tell you that. In fact, Pharaoh really assumes that the wilderness has shut up the people of God with no escape route. And the enemy would like for you to believe that there's no way out of the situation that you're in. Praise God, praise God. He wants you to believe that there is no hope, that it's endless, that God has left you, that he's went on vacation, that he cannot hear your prayers. I want to tell you something. The devil is alive. Yes, he is. Amen. Well, Pastor, you just don't know my circumstance. You don't know my situation. You don't know what I'm in. I don't have to know what you're in. But I can tell you this. God is still God. And he can make a way where there is no way. He can make an escape. And it don't look like there's any escape route. Praise God. If it was under in the wilderness, there's no end in sight. And I tell you, he will make a He's the victor. Yes. He's the great I am. 
So here's what I believe God is also saying to us today. Let us let the enemy keep doing his thing. Don't worry about him. Because I'm getting ready to handle him. Yes. <laughs> and what has been giving you a fit, I'm getting ready to bury it. Yes. And I was reading that yesterday. I really believe that. People say, well, you're full of it. Just pray for me. I'm telling you, I believe when I was studying that, it's like the Lord just dropped that in my spirit. What has been bothering you? What's been causing you a problem? What's been giving you a fit? What's been keeping you up at night? What's been making you wring your hands? What's been making you pull your hair? God said, if you'll just give it to me, I'm getting ready to bury that thing. Somebody say amen. I'm getting ready to bury it. Chapter 14 and verse 4. Here's what the Lord says. The Egyptians will know that I am God. I'm bringing them out here. And they're going to know that I'm God. God's setting that thing up for a final battle. Of the ending. You see, this wasn't a battle between people. This was a battle between good and evil. What That's you're right. fighting today is not between people. That's right. Hello, somebody. Right. This is a spiritual thing. Yes. This thing's getting ready to wrap yes. up. Yes. Satan yes. is playing for keeps. Do you hear what I'm yes. saying? The enemy is playing for keeps. Yes. Uh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But listen, if you'll just hold on to God. That's right. What the enemy thought had been a setup for your demise on, yes. Amen. has actually been a setup for your delivery. Yes. Yes. He's brought the enemy on your turf so that he may be given the glory. When God buries something, it stays buried. I don't have time to finish this today. Just like when God shut the door on the ark. When God shuts a door, no, no man, no woman, no child, no government, no individual, no person can open it. And when God opens a door, can I tell you, that same principle applies here. No person can shut that door. Somebody say amen. Not even the devil himself can shut the door. When God opens, why don't you just lift your hands up and thank you for opening up that door. The enemy's tried. He's tried to do away with some of you. But God. Look at your neighbor and say, but God. I don't know exactly what the plan of Pharaoh was. Whether it was to take the people of God captive again or to kill them. I don't know what his plan was. But either way, he was going to have to try and ruin their lives. But God stepped in and said, today is the day. Today's it. No more will you see this people again. Never again will Pharaoh bother you. Amen. 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 That's right. No more. I'm getting ready. And as I close, 2020's been a terrible, terrible year in many ways. Yes. A lot of things didn't go like you thought. A lot of plans probably were ruined. Sickness, disease. Maybe you've lost people you love. Whatever the case may be. But God is saying there's better days ahead. A Gallup poll, recently polled, People rating their own mental health. Talking about 2020 now. They rated their own mental health this year at this time compared to last year at this time. Only one group of people rated their mental health higher this year than last year. Let me tell you who it was. People who attended church weekly. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. 
Forty-two percent in 2019 said it was it was good, but 46 percent said it was even better in 2020. Why'd you tell us that, Pastor? I'm telling you, keep moving forward. That's right. Amen. Keep moving forward. Amen. Stay motivated. Yeah. Don't let the devil tell you that this is it. That's right. That you're going out and you're going under. Yes, amen. You're just in that place of transition. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I felt that. Jesus. You're in that place of transition. Yes, brother. God is taking you out from one place. You're, you're right here. And it looks like things are going to get even uglier. But God said, I'm going to, oh, I feel that Holy Ghost right now. God is saying, I'm getting ready to take this. Yes. This is going to be your, uh, 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 it's going to just be a prop for you. It's getting ready to bust you forward into what I have for you. Will you stand? Will you stand? Will you stand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God that I serve. This place that you're in is going to be a, pro, a, a propelling, a pushing forward place. When it looks like the enemy is going to take you out, God said, let's get ready to just take you forward. Yes. You don't worry about that. I'll take care of that. I'll take care of that. Whatever that it is. And some of you in this house, you know what it is. And God said, if you'll just give it to me, I'm, I'll handle it. I'll handle it. With every head bowed and right closed, the saints of God praying, if you're in this place this morning, and you say, Pastor, I need prayer right now. I need, I need prayer right now. I need, I need the Lord to touch me right now. I need the Lord to touch me right now. I, 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 I'm, I'm just baffled. I am shaken. I, I, I'm confused. I'm dazed. Whatever the case may be. But I need prayer. Would you come?